You're about to hear something that might just change how you think about global technology wars. China just pulled off a move that Washington never expected. Not by outspending the US, not by matching our chip designs, but by completely changing the game, by rewriting the rules entirely. Here's the thing, the United States thought it was ahead. Washington poured $52 billion into semiconductor subsidies trying to ensure that silicon continued to rule the tech world. But while the US was doing that, China made a quiet, subtle, but incredibly powerful move. They reclassified photonic and neuromorphic chips as national strategic assets. That's a big deal. Why? Because by doing that, China didn't just keep pace with the US. It set the stage to leapfrog. You see, photonics, using light rather than traditional electrical currents to process data, could represent the next giant leap in chip technology. And while the US was focused on silicon, China started preparing for a future where light, not silicon, would power the next wave of artificial intelligence and computation. While Washington thought it could maintain control of subsidies, China's strategy wasn't about copying the US model, it was about creating an entirely new one. The real twist here is that even without the EUV machines, the next-gen lithography tools that are supposed to be the cornerstone of semiconductor progress, China's chip industry has kept growing. In 2023, U.S. exports to China fell by a shocking 42%. Meanwhile, China's chip sector saw a 12.6% year-over-year growth. This isn't a fluke. It's evidence of a deeper shift. Now, let's get deeper. Dr. Kevin Xu put it very clearly in a recent interview. He said, What looks like China falling behind may actually be China opting out of the United States roadmap. Think about that. What if we're not actually in a race anymore? What if the US and China aren't even running on the same track? What if we're in parallel wars, fighting different battles with completely different objectives? The US is still trying to win by outspending and out-siliconing, but China? China is doing something else. In October 2024, a paper from Wuhan's Huhong University described a breakthrough in photonic processors, chips that use photons to carry out computations. This technology out performed conventional silicon chips in both bandwidth and thermal efficiency by eight times. It didn't rely on any U.S. intellectual property. It wasn't using the EUV tools that Washington had hoped would freeze China's progress. No, this project, called Suncor, was powered entirely by domestic components, and when this breakthrough was discovered, it triggered an emergency review by DARPA and the National Security Council. Intel's CTO, Greg Lavender, confessed at CES 2025 that the development of photonic computing outside the U.S. had completely surpassed expectations. China wasn't just playing catch-up, it was skipping entire stages of development. And guess what? This wasn't an isolated incident, China's already commercializing photonic photonic computing. They're moving fast, while the West is still trying to keep up. 2024, Smike produced a 7 nanometer chip for Huawei, despite the EUV machine ban, by using DUV patterning and older tools. These tools, once thought outdated, managed to deliver fabrication precision that was previously believed impossible without the next-gen equipment. And even more impressive, the chip's transistor density is on par with Apple's A13 chip, despite the lack of EUV technology. So what's happening here? China is taking what others can considered old tech and making it work better than expected. Smike, for example, has already placed an order worth $3.2 billion for domestic etching and deposition tools in 2024. This represents a 47% year-over-year increase. China isn't just trying to replace the West's tools, it's actively building an entirely new self-sufficient ecosystem, and it's doing this on its own terms. According to Dr. Chris Miller, former director of lithography at TSMC, it's not that China is overcoming EUV, it's inventing a new baseline of what's good enough without it. And that baseline is already powering over 15 million smartphones. So here's the big question. What happens when China, using outdated tools and older techniques, starts out producing the West with an entirely different baseline of technology? What happens when the West can no longer afford to keep up with the pace of innovation? Now let's talk about the power of photonics. If you haven't been paying attention, you should. Photonic chips, using light instead of electrical currents, could potentially reduce energy usage in AI applications by up to 90%. That's a huge leap forward for sustainability, performance, and efficiency. But while the U.S. Department of Energy allocated a modest $147 million to photonics in 2024, China's National Natural Science Foundation poured $1.3 billion into photonics research across 17 university programs and 8 startup grants. This isn't just a strategic investment, it's China laying the groundwork for a revolution in computing that's happening outside the 
conventional silicon chip ecosystem. While U.S. companies are still focused on the incremental improvements of silicon, China's universities and companies are diving into entirely new materials. And I'm not talking about theoretical research in a lab somewhere. No, in January 2025, researchers at Peking University published a paper in Nature showing a 2D transistor built using molybdenum disulfide and hexagonal boron nitride, two materials that are thousands of times thinner than silicon. The results were astonishing. This transistor, made with modified DUV tools and costing less than $400,000, outperformed Intel's latest 3 nanometer nodes in power efficiency by 60%. In the West, 2D semiconductors are still treated as lab curiosities. In China, they're already prototyping these materials as potential production-ready alternatives. And this is a game-changer. If Moore's law is slowing, this discovery doesn't just keep the curve alive, it completely redefines it. Meanwhile, back in the US, it's not all smooth sailing. By the first quarter of 2025, $39 billion in chip funding had been allocated, yet only 18% of approved projects had broken ground. Intel's Arizona facility, originally scheduled to open in late 2024, has been delayed until mid-2026. TSMC's U.S. expansion has been marred by cost overruns and cultural friction with local engineers. All of this points to one simple fact. The U.S. semiconductor industry is stuck. The machinery of innovation has slowed down. On the policy front, the U.S. is still treating technological superiority as something that can be achieved through sheer capital. Meanwhile, China is approaching this as a matter of coordination and long-term architecture. It's not about throwing money at problems. It's about creating a structure that allows innovation to scale quickly and flexibly. The U.S. can continues to treat semiconductors as a numbers game, throw money, build fabs, and assume victory. China is approaching the problem from a different angle. They're decentralizing the process, experimenting with new materials, and building a robust, fast, and adaptable ecosystem. And it's working. Between 2020 and 2024, Chinese municipal governments issued more than $19 billion in semiconductor-related grants, with over 60% directed toward university to commercial tech transfer programs. That's infrastructure in action. That's China turning public resources into a competitive advantage. And China isn't stopping. In 2024, Shenzhen-based GraphTech began delivering prototype logic gates to a major Chinese telecom company. These chips use graphene field effect transistors and represent a leap forward in 2D chip architecture. Meanwhile, China's imports of graphite, the key material for graphene, have surged 67%. This indicates a deliberate strategy to vertically integrate critical materials that are foundational to the next generation of chips. Now, here's where it gets interesting. While U.S. tech giants like Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Alphabet still account for $6.2 trillion in market capitalization, there are signs that this legacy silicon-based dominance is in danger. Goldman Sachs recently downgraded the long-term projections for silicon-based companies, while China's AI chip market grew by 24% in 2024, largely powered by domestically sourced accelerators. Analysts are starting to revise their projections. Their pricing in the past while China is building for the future. The truth is, China isn't trying to catch up anymore. It's no longer looking to the U.S. as its benchmark. It's creating its own timeline, its own roadmap, and that's a huge problem for the West. The question isn't just who wins the chip war, it's what happens when there are two completely different wars being fought and only one side is aware of it. So, when this divergence becomes impossible to ignore, when these ecosystems collide, how will the global tech economy react? What happens when the dominant force in technology no longer resides? in Silicon Valley but in Beijing. The world of tech is changing. It's not just about who's ahead now, it's about who will be leading the next generation of innovation. If you're not paying attention to what's happening in China, you might be missing the next giant leap forward. Make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with the latest developments in this unfolding tech revolution.